Well, good morning. Welcome to the last day of March in South Central Wisconsin here. I was going to haul corn in for the neighbor today, but he doesn't like to run the trucks in sloppy weather if it's not necessary. So I'll be working on the 60 instead. So let's go get at it. This is the oil pump for my 60. I was debating whether I would even disassemble it because it wasn't in the least bit sticky. You can hear oil inside of it. But the only problems I could picture having with it, this is obviously some sort of a pressure relief valve. So I want to take that apart to make sure it isn't stuck tight. And I don't know, it might be keyed or pinned, the drive gear on the shaft inside. And I want to inspect that to make sure that that's in good condition. So I'm going to start at disassembling the oil pump. I think this is the last thing I'm actually taking apart on this crawler. Everything else is to the point of going together. But I'm really not re anticipating any type of repairs inside this. Just inspection and cleaning up and reassembling it. Now I can carefully take this cover off. Hopefully we can save the gasket. And we didn't. I'll measure that gasket with a mic to make a new one. We can see there's a groove in the top side of the gear so we won't get that mixed up. So it goes back in, right side up. And the teeth appear to show nowhere be in excellent condition. Now I'll see if we can get this other gear off. As you can see it obviously has a woodruff key on this shaft. So we'll slide that gear off and inspect that key. It should be fine. Well, I thought that gear might just slide off as I've seen on some oil pumps. But there's a hole in this side like it may be pinned, but that hole doesn't go all the way through. And seeing the gear is tight on the shaft, I think we're not going to disturb any of that. We're just going to clean it up and reassemble it. Polish the shaft here a little bit. Take a little burr off where the hole is for the drive pin. I don't even think I'm going to take the shaft all the way out. I don't know if the shaft isn't perfectly straight up there. Or if it's burrs, I can't really find anything. I'm just going to let the shaft in or I can wash it up the way it is. I don't like forcing anything that isn't necessary. I'm just inspecting the gear here a little bit. There's a little corrosion on the gear. And I'll polish off. I don't think it's anything that would have hurt anything. I'll keep a piece of this gasket to mic it for a new one. Here you can feel a little bit of an edge. This is the driven side where the shaft is on. So the weight of that shaft and gear is on here. You can feel just a little bit of wear in the plate. One little bitty score mark. Here's some corrosion. I'll clean that off. So I'll polish this all up before I reassemble it. Now I'm going to go to pressure relief valve. 
I'm going to measure. It's obviously adjustable, and I'm going to measure the distance here as to how far it's screwed in so I get it the same when I put it back together. And it's point, point 0.190. So that's all I set it at when I put it back together. Oh, that's all nice and free. I'll just, I was expecting to see a ball type valve, a ball in there. But it has a cone or a taper. There's a little corrosion on that too, we'll clean it up. So basically all the oil pump is going to be is clean it all up, lube it, and reassemble it. So we'll get at that. I wound up polishing the shaft just a little bit more and it slid right out. Now I'm at cleaning. These weren't blind holes, but they almost look like it. There's so much sludge in them. So I can clean all those out before I start to clean it up for good. Just enormous amount of sludge in those. The oil pan itself, I think, has about a half inch sludge in the bottom. I think that's where they talk about people are afraid of an old engine that used non-detergent oil. And if they put modern detergent oil in it, that the sludge will come loose and plug stuff up and damage the engine. I've never had it happen, but I can see their concern for it. This happens to be a brass bristle wire brush I'm using on this gear. It's got a little pitting in a couple places. I don't know how this is pinned and I'm not going to find out. Because there isn't the slightest bit of movement on the shaft so I'm sure it's all, the key and everything I'm sure is all just fine. I'm going to clean the other gear up a little more to get a look at it. This gear has very, very little pitting on it. We're going to give them the first rinse off in a little mineral spirits. See what everything looks like. I'll make the gasket for the plant, which sandwiches between the oil pump and the crankcase. I had to go out and get the right size hole punch for these. I really should have a piece of brass or aluminum for punching these on. Those holes punched, and I'll cut the hole that lines up with there. And I'll cut around the outside edge of it. If you can see here, the hole in the middle comes all the way around like this because there's a relief in the engine block the oil pressure from the pump comes up through here this is where the drive shaft goes down and oil pressure comes up through here and this acts like a manifold into that relief in the block and there are holes drilled and tapped in the block on the top side that have the oil lines going to the main bearings 
So now either I have to go out and lay upside down and press it up against a engine block to mark that line or else I have to measure off of this plate and cut it that way. I think I'm going to measure off this plate and cut it that way instead of going out there and laying on my back. So the radius or the diameter of this washer just about exactly matches this line on that plate from the gasket. So I'm going to use that to to uh, scratch to make a marker on there. If you notice, it's a little off to one side here, and that's how it is here too. So I want it to match up with the mating surface on the block. And the circumference of this old expansion plug about matches up with the uh, line on the plate here. And it goes just a little past center of these holes on each end. So I'll lay it on there. Take the straight edge. So I have it marked, and I'll cut it out. And I think I'm going to use a razor blade because uh, using the scissors, you seem to to uh, distort the paper more. And also, as you can see, there's a little bit of a radius here and here, and I'll put a little bit of a radius in there too. So we'll get to cutting it out. And we have a gasket. And it looks just about perfect in here as to where it lines up where you could see the gasket was stuck to it before. Now I had made these two gaskets out of this white paper but after getting the brown paper bag I mic that and it's the same thickness and I'm going to remake these gaskets out of the brown paper bag because I think that has longer fibers in it that's a little tougher so I'm going to remake those. Punch the holes. And cut it out. Well, I think I'm going to... Draw the line in so I can see it a little better as I'm cutting. Now I can see the line a little better as I'm cutting. And there, we have a gasket for the bottom of the oil pump. I'm happier with this than the one I cut out of the white paper. And I will make the gasket for the top side of the oil pump. Punch the holes. Cut the holes. Cut out around the outside of it. And we have a gasket for the top side of the oil pump. So I should have all the gaskets made for the oil pump. Uh, I have to do the, get some brake clean, do the final cleanup on this, and then I'll do the assembly and installation. But I think that's going to be it for this video. As I always say, thanks once again for watching, and uh, hope to see you on the next one. I hope you're liking them. Thank you. Bye.